Hello. It's been a while. How you been? What are we on? 26th of April, my friend's birthday. 2024. Eight years ago, I was warning the end. Something big was going to happen. And I also had this urge to make a quick video saying there was going to be big earthquake in California imminently. And as I've said in later videos, you know, it wasn't a physical earthquake. It was a political people earthquake. And it was Trump and it was Trump winning over the voters in that area of America. And then, you know, when I thought nothing was going to happen, on June 24th, 2016, I was thinking whatever has been giving me information, you know, it, it, it's wrong. I've got to reassess everything I've ever thought. And um, I turned on the radio and then heard the news that the Brexit vote had won, Brexit had won, which was not what anyone was expecting. So I was like, right, so the earthquake, the, the, the end, the doom wasn't a physical thing. It was a, it was a political thing, a, a people thing. So that was 2016, uh, this sort of time of year coming up. Um, eight years ago. Now, this links to what we've just recently had, which is an eclipse. And we'd had another eclipse in 2017. And Jacob Israel made a video about the 2017 eclipse going one way across America diagonally. And said, you know, and in uh, 2024, in April 2024, there's going to be another eclipse. And it's going that way. And it forms this cross and goes through all these towns called Nineveh and Jonah and stuff. You know. Anyway, so we have had that, that period from 2017. I don't know what time of year it was to 2024, which I think, you know, is probably how God communicates certain things. And what we've had in that period has been extremely interesting and but mainly frustrating for most of us. Uh, you know, um, Trump came into power. He, he, he won the election just, uh, kicked Hillary Clinton out. We didn't have war in Syria, which was looming at the time. Uh, there was, it was pretty peaceful. Uh, Trump was doing a lot of good for Americans. Um, and that affects us in Britain. I mean, in Britain, we kind of just follow America everywhere. So whatever America is doing, it's usually directly impacts us because we end up doing it too. And then what happened? You know, like... I've, I've talked about Fabians a lot. Their motto is, you know, like the tortoise to go slow, and wait for that right time. And when you strike, you strike hard. And covid <laughs> I'm afraid of saying it now because my blooming channel gets getting warnings. Uh, was one of those, you know, just a hard strike and just relentless on it, you know, wouldn't accept any words against it. <clears throat> you know, anyway, we all know what that was like. And then pretty much as soon as that was over, we had the war in Ukraine. And basically, you know, America was just pushing and prodding and poking at Russia, you know, they were just scorned in every way, weren't they? Sort of accused of being drugged up at the Olympics. And, you know, I don't know if they were or not, but, 
you know, plenty of other nations that, who <laughs> athletes who've taken drugs, and the you know the whole country don't get banned. Uh, you know, we had the the poisoning thing in Salisbury with the Novichok, and I was dubious about that time. Made a video and right, so um, you know all this sort of hostility towards Russia, and then you know. They didn't really try any diplomacy, did they? They just sort of took all the diplomats out. And I've actually just written a letter to the MP because the way they're now wanting to fund this more of this Ukraine war, you know, they're saying war is the only <laughs> the only options. Like they've completely forgotten about diplomacy. But I'm kind of hoping because that we've had this second eclipse that it's not going to materialize to be bad. I'm kind of hoping that this eclipse period, uh, in a sense, was was a disruptive period, um, particularly when I was into the, well, I still am, into the 19-year wave thing and the other waves, you know, which seems to bore everybody else, but I'm fascinated by is in this period where we, you know, we should have been really enjoying coming up from 2014 and coming up. And, you know, despite all that we've had to put up with, the COVID and the wars and everything, you know, if you think how how things feel, they feel pretty calm. I don't know. Yeah, obviously, I've only got my own thing to go by, but um, I would compare that with, say, in 2011, 2013, definitely felt like there was this sort of you know doom feeling around <coughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah so in a period when we should have been coming up we had to deal with all this COVID crap and January 24th is was the top of the 19 year wave so we are starting to sort of come down but we're still up here um, where was I going with that? Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry. So, well, so I'm hoping even though they're still sort of, you know, not using diplomacy, still wanting to sort of, you know, progress on a war front. Um, and we've got a very clear divide now, it seems. It's, it's sort of east and west, isn't it? It's sort of, if you think about it, um, Iran, Russia, India, China, you know, they're all on that side. <laughs> right side for you. Um, it, it's quite quite a clear divide. And Africa is kind of would be involved if it wasn't, you know what I mean, so war-torn within itself anyway, which is, you know, probably um, caused by the West, in a sense, to keep, to keep Africa sort of out of it. Um, yeah, but so hopefully God will, you know, <clears throat> uh, intervene and we won't have uh, an escalation uh, of this. And um, hopefully Gaza and that can get sorted. And um, well, yeah, so kind of what I'm basically saying is that um, if God speaks, why not with eclipses? I saw a short video of that that eclipse and everyone moaning. You know, there was something, definitely something about it uh, that I think is significant um, from, from uh, you know, God's angle and what God is doing and all this. Because obviously God gives, gives us all free will, but God does have a plan. Uh you know, and I, I do now believe that, yeah, part of that plan is um, to, in a sense, destroy the civilizations we create every about 12,000 years. Um, but mainly because the civilizations we create are, are corrupt, you know, and they end up becoming ever so much stronger, you know. Um, I guess in the olden days, you could get a, an army together and you could go and take down an, 
a nation's sort of institution, you know, the most important part of the nation, let's say it's the city of London here, you know, if you were to want to take over the country, you know, what, you know, so many things you'd have to do now, whereas compared in the old day, you go and sword fight and kill the king and you'd be the new king and voila, you know, so, so these things become just, oh, they're just, I don't even know, you know, what, how many levels of crap they've got <laughs> protecting them. Because obviously the first thing you want to do when you get power is to hold on to it. You know, it's the first thing anyone does when they get power is look for ways to hold on to that power. So in a sense, yeah, you know, we can't be allowed too much time to for our our civilizations, the way we've kind of created them, to, to stick around every 12,000 years. They, they stand the test of um, being shaken and uh, they, you know, they will fall down and we will start again because they're not ideal, perfect civilizations. It's, um, it's part of the learning process. I don't know how many more times we'll do it. And I don't know if perhaps we will in this one in the next hundred years manage to because in a sense in order to keep hold of the civilization you'd have to uh, you know go and land on mars or something and start a community there while earth was going through its troubles but then mars might be too so maybe you'd have to go to another solar system so perhaps that is just totally out of the question but I'm sure there will be things that remain from our civilization which will provide clues to the next ones. And we've got the same thing in our civilization, the pyramids and some of the stuff in South America. I know it's disputed how old they are. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of evidence out there to say that they are about 12,000 years old. So they could have been pinnacle of what they managed to do in the previous epoch I'm calling it um, yeah and we'll start again I actually quite relish that idea it's actually a nice idea to think that we will still be having future lives where the world was much more different it was much more freer we're basically living wild um, and you had, you know, you had to sort of learn everything, do everything yourself, have the skills to do it. But that's a very healthy way to live. So, yeah, well, <laughs> quite got there. But, yeah, that's, that's how I see it happening. But I see, you know, the next hundred years or so is going to be very much, you know, a lot. We're going to learn a lot. But yeah, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be mad. Now, I could be wrong about all this, obviously, and the the test to, to see if I am wrong or right is coming up in the next um, five or six years or more. So, what I'm saying is, we get to the next bottom in 2033 and this isn't just the bottom of a normal 19 year wave this also has the addition of one of the trumpets so i've decoded the book of revelations see my video on that this might be on another channel decode book of revelations decoded like never before by stephen hartley there you find it um, and so the previous trumpet, the fourth trumpet, was Second World War, 1938. And so now we're in the, the fifth trumpet. And the fifth trumpet, the, the, all the bowls, seals and things, they're all happening together. That's how I've decoded the book of Revelations like never before. So the bowl, the, 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 
the trumpet uh, and the seal and the church, fifth church, is all about that time, 2033. Um, <clears throat> so the bowl gets poured out onto the seat of the beast, the throne of the beast. So whereas previous bowls were poured out on the earth, the seas, the rivers and the sun, uh, this one now is poured on the seat of the beast. So that's actually a good thing, isn't it? If the, the bowl of wrath gets poured on the seat of the beast rather than parts of the planet and stuff. But anyway, it's an ominous one anyway. There's obviously every trumpet, you know, massive stuff happens. And um, I think it's the fifth trumpet is one of the longest bits and it talks about this plague plague of locusts um, and they, they look like galloping horses and they they have this sting and um, <clears throat> I was just hearing on the news the other day about the the fire ant uh, there's this particular species of the fire ant which came from South America it's been a problem in America North America for since the 1950s, their attempts to eradicate it have just gone really badly so far. But although I did watch a documentary on it and they've, they've got this fly that can plant an egg in the head of the ant and then the ant dies. And this is their best, uh, and it, it does it kind of work, it keeps them down a bit. But anyway, it's spreading around this uh, fire ant. And it has a... So it doesn't bite, it has a sting in the middle of its abdomen. Really, really painful. And if you think about ants, the way they walk, they, they could kind of look a bit like horses in a way. Like if you're if you using the word locusts, but you because they didn't know the word ant or something, they didn't know what an ant was. So you can they knew what locusts were. So it was like a locust, but they looked like galloping horses. If you come close up, small one. But yeah, um, you know, it, and they go for electrical equipment as well, these ants. They they really liked, apparently, some quite big proportion of um, uh, the problems that occur caused by these ants. Um, I mean, they get everywhere. They are relentless. Uh, if you if you had a patch of ants near you, they kill everything, and they could you know in large enough number and and their numbers are big. They're like quarter of a million size um, cities, if you like, of ants. And you know they people have died. I think people they have killed people. So if and that would be um, the fact we call them fire ants, and you know. How it knew, but we you know, have this thing about the world being destroyed by fire. Yeah, yeah that's um, reaching a bit. <clears throat> but because um, uh, the other thing that the, the four, fifth trumpet and these locusts that look like horses, and it says that they have this, uh, they have this sting. And uh, so it's potential because I was before I was thinking it's it's the injection it's the uh, mRNA injections, but it could be these fire ants. <laughs> it could be both. It could be neither. But yeah, so in a sense, the test of my theories and my waves and everything will be coming um, in the next few years because I I suspect it will start because you. We'll, you know, we'll be feeling a bit ahead the future. So, you know, I can see like all the Doom videos beginning in uh, 2027, 2028. People then, you know, anxious about because we're coming down on the wave. It'll just be this adjustment that we make to this feeling now coming down on the wave. It's sort of all worrying and all that sort of thing. Well, I don't know if I've made any sense at all, but um, it was quite enjoyable for me to have a little chat.
and uh, using different video camera using the phone I've had to buy. Uh, should I? Should I not? I don't know. Look, it's bit sort of test out the sound, what it's like. Here's a handy thing, you know those square batteries that are really expensive. There's two lithium batteries out of a laptop battery. Works. Works good. <laughs> so I've noticed that um, a lot of bands you play their songs with a capo on the second fret, it actually sounds like the original song. So for years and years and years I've been playing these songs in the wrong key. <coughs> Change. How many lives are living strange? Where were you while we were getting high? Slowly walking down the hall, faster than a cannonball. Where were you while we were getting high? Someday you will find me. Sky. Someday you will find me caught beneath the landslide in a champagne supernova, a champagne supernova in the sky. The dawn and ask her why I dream a dream but never dies. Wipe that tear away now from your eyes. Slowly walking down the hall, faster than a cannonball. Where were you while we were getting high? Champagne supernova, 
Joe. No.